The Creality K1C is not the 3D printer I expected it to be. There are a number of things that they've got right and maybe a couple that they might have got wrong, but by the end of this video, you'll see why I believe that this is the best Creality 3D printer that I've ever owned. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I've been testing the Creality K1C for a while now and I like it. Honestly, that's not something I was expecting. You see, the K1C is not really a new printer. At its core, it's still the same K1 that Creality released a year ago, which from all reports was a horror show. I don't have a K1, I avoided it because of all the bad reviews and online reports from users who did buy one. Creality did send me this K1C for free, but I'm under no obligation to say good things about it. I will get into the problems that made me glad I never owned the original K1, and we'll look at what Creality have done to fix things on the K1C, but first let's look at the basics. The K1C is a Core XY 3D printer, like many of the others that have been popping up over the last couple of years since Bamboo Lab started taking over. It has an average build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters that is fully enclosed with an auxiliary cooling fan and an extractor fan which has a carbon filter. I was surprised and maybe a little disappointed that the K1C doesn't come with active chamber heating as I assumed that this printer was aimed more at engineering filaments. This is because the C in the K1C stands for carbon fibre, which means that you can print with filaments infused with carbon fibre. Now, most 3D printers can print with these filaments, they just wear out very quickly because the fibres in the filament are very abrasive. To combat this, Creality upgraded all of the parts that touch the filament in the hot end to materials that are much harder wearing. The reason that I'd assumed that the K1C was aimed more at engineering filaments is that you only really want to use filaments with carbon fibre in if you want your prints to be stronger. Another way of making your prints strong is to print with filaments like nylon or polycarbonate. However, if you do want to print with these filaments, then you generally want active chamber heating and a bed and nozzle that are capable of reaching higher temperatures, none of which come on the K1C. The nozzle can reach 300 degrees and the bed 100. These are very respectable temperatures for home 3D printers, but they don't quite go into the realms of industrial printing. I did print some smaller nylon parts and the quality was actually really good, but I also used a bed adhesive, preheated the bed and kept the lid and door closed. The K1C's temperatures are perfectly adequate if you want to print with some of the more common filaments like PLA, PETG and ASA, but if you want to print with anything a little bit more exotic, then ideally you want a printer that can go a little bit hotter. The print surface, a smooth PEI, is also not perfectly suited to some of these more engineering filaments, and it actually says on it that it's designed for PLA. Initially when I started testing, I didn't use any kind of bed adhesive and PLA stuck fine. When I tried printing with some other filaments, I did use my favourite bed adhesive, which is 3D Lac, and then there were no other issues other than those I will get to in a minute. Therefore, as I've said, the K1C is perfectly capable of printing with all of the lower temperature filaments that have fibres in as well, but it's not really capable of the super strong stuff. Now it's probably just my misunderstanding, but to me the C in the name gave me some expectations that weren't quite met. Personally, I think that Creality used the K1C name to try and save a little bit of face and distance itself from the original K1, which had so many problems. As this printer is basically just the K1 Mark II, it's only fair that we quickly look at all of the issues that the K1 had and at what Creality have done to try and fix things. So firstly, the simple stuff. The door on the K1C won't be smashing on you. There's a pretty well-known clip of Uncle Jesse destroying the door on his K1 when it swung open and smashed. The hinge has now been changed so that it can't swing open and there's an anti-shatter film on the glass. Also, I like that the door has just got a light smoke tin and is a flat glass. Some other manufacturers have messed this bit up by using moulded plastic or very dark acrylics. You want to be able to see your print running without opening the door and with the internal light on, you can do just that on the K1C. Another nice touch is the rubber gasket that runs down the hinge, which helps avoid pollutants and heat escaping. The enclosure isn't completely sealed though, which feels like it could have been sorted pretty easily. Another way to watch your print is with the included internal camera. The K1 didn't have this and it's really nice to be able to keep an eye on what your printer's doing if it's not sitting right next to you. Another issue that a lot of people reported with the K1 is VFAs or vertical fine artifacts. These are vertical lines on a print surface and are usually caused by the printer's hardware and are very difficult, if not impossible, to get rid of with the K1. 
Reality seemed to have solved this issue on the K1C, most likely by changing the belt pulleys, but whatever the reason, it's great to see that they've gone. In fact, print quality has been really good throughout my whole testing period with the K1C. For the vast majority of my prints, I used the included Creality slicer, which has improved a lot since I last used it about a year ago. The only time I ditched Creality's own slicer was to set up a HueForge multicolor print in Orca Slicer. I'm sure it would have been possible to use Creality Slicer to insert the filament changes that I needed, but I just know my way around Orca Slicer a bit better, so used it for speed. I will be making a video soon which will show how to use printers like the K1C that don't have an automatic material switching system to print these multicolor HueForge prints, so hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out. Now, as good as printers like the K1C are, there are some jobs that are just a bit beyond their capabilities. Instead of investing in a new machine for those odd jobs that are just a bit beyond what a home 3D printer can do, think about using PCBWay. PCBWay are fast becoming a one-stop shop for anything 3D printed, CNC machined, metal fabricated, or even injection molded. In fact, PCBWay are capable of making pretty much anything you can dream up with their huge range of manufacturing methods. Their 3D printing services are probably going to be the most interesting to people like you and me, and they can now print all of those three-letter acronyms like SLA, DLP, FDM, SLM, and SLS. If you don't yet know what any of that means, they can pretty much print with all of the materials it's possible to print with, including metal. Check out their website from the link in the description for more details, including an instant quick quote to see what your latest idea could cost to bring to life. Now, back to the K1C. The last issue that Creality seemed to have fixed with the K1 is with the hot end and extruder. The K1 had under extrusion issues and multiple accounts of problems with the hot end thermistor readings, but I'm pleased to say that I didn't encounter any of these issues while testing the K1C. There has been some confusion over whether the K1C has an all metal extruder, and after taking it apart, I can tell you that it doesn't. Some of the extruder gears are plastic. As I said earlier, all of the parts in the hot end that the filament touches are metal, but there are some plastic parts in there still. I don't really see this as a particular problem though. Lots of other printers have this same setup, and the Creality one seems very well made. Now the one K1 problem that I'm not going to say is 100% fixed is the issue with bed warping. The K1 series apparently use a series of strain sensors inside the bed to sense when the nozzle is touching during levelling. Some K1 owners found that the bed would then warp slightly when heated after it had been probed. There have been a couple of workarounds for this, with some even resorting to adding bed springs so that they could manually tram their bed. Tramming the bed is the process of making sure that your bed is completely parallel to the plane that the nozzle passes through. Through most of my general testing, I didn't even pay attention to the bed mesh or Z offset, and I can't say I noticed any issues. However, when I was working through all of the problems with the K1 to see if they'd been fixed, I decided to print a single layer full bed print to see how it came out. Initially, it looked good, but on closer inspection, it seems that something's not quite right. Now, paying a bit more attention to the actual bed level, I could see that it wasn't really trammed very well to start with. This in itself shouldn't really be a problem because the printer should use the bed mesh to compensate, but to see if I could improve things, I decided to have a little play around with the belts and pulleys in the bottom that control the Z-axis to try and level things up. Once I got everything a bit better lined up, there was a slight improvement, but it still seems that the bed mesh isn't quite perfect and there are still some raised areas. This indicates to me that the bed is either still slightly shifting after the mesh has been taken, or the actual method for taking the bed mesh isn't as accurate as it should be. Now, a couple of years ago, we would have said that having filaments stick to every area of the bed in one way or another would be amazing, but things have moved on. I'm currently testing out two bamboo lab machines, the A1 and the A1 Mini, and the first layers on those are flawless. I can't say exactly what isn't quite right on the K1C, but it would be really nice to see those flawless first layers on the Creality machine. So with one small exception, it seems that Creality have been able to sort all of the issues with the original K1. So what else do you get if you choose to buy the K1C? Well, as with many of the other Core XY 3D printers that are now on the market, you get super fast printing. Now, at some point, we're gonna to have to stop saying that these clipper speeds are so fast as they're generally becoming the norm now, but it wasn't that long ago that the 600 millimeters per second that machines like the K1C can achieve were just out of the question. 
The 20,000 millimeters per second squared that the K1C can achieve is also pretty standard now, but to really take advantage of those fast accelerations, you need a light print head, which I'm pleased to say the K1C also has. The extruder assembly is nice and compact, and the plastic fan housing is also minimized to save weight. The K1C's tri-metal unicorn nozzle hot end setup is touted as being quick change, but I don't really see what's that quick about it. It's basically the same as an old school nozzle change and printers that switch out the entire hot end like the Bamboo Lab A1 series and Flashforge's 5M Pro are much quicker. The whole hot end switch on these other machines also make them much more expensive if you want to change the nozzle though. Considering how long you can expect a hardened steel nozzle to last though, personally I'd rather take the slightly longer process on the K1C rather than the more expensive spares of those other machines. When it comes to other features, 3D printers seem to have so many these days that it's difficult to list them all in one review. What I can tell you though is what Creality are doing differently to most of its competition, which will be a massive selling point to a certain group of users. In a bid to make their machines more accessible to beginners, many 3D printing manufacturers are now limiting the things you can play with when it comes to settings by using their own custom user interfaces that lock things down. This was one of my biggest criticisms of Flashforge's 5M models. It's great for beginners, but if you're a bit more experienced and used to customizing things, it can feel very restrictive. If you've never owned a 3D printer before, then this feature may seem pretty irrelevant, but the more you learn about how to maximize what your printer can do, the more options you want to have available. To ensure that they don't alienate one group of customers to please another, Creality have given us the option of root access for all of their K1 machines. What this basically means is that those of us who like to peek behind the curtain can, but without having to completely overwrite the stock firmware as you would have to do on a lot of other machines. In fact, Creality have made it so easy to do and undo that it's just a simple menu option. Once selected, you're able to install all of the additional features and functions that people with completely custom machines have without sacrificing any of the simple functionality of the Creality software or even the slick screen interface. Peeking behind the curtain and seeing how things work is something that I very much like to do. And the fact that Creality have made it so easy on the K1C earns them big brownie points from me. Now, I must say that Creality haven't done all of the work here. There are some hardworking community members that have made all of the modifying process so easy, but Creality have just stopped being the fun sponges they were being by locking things down in the past. In a world where every 3D printer manufacturer is scrambling to catch up to Bamboo Lab, Creality have done something that Bamboo Lab will never do, and it gives a lot of people a reason to buy their machines instead. I also think that the K1 series of printers are really nice to look at. We've come a long way from the DIY Johnny 5 look of the Ender 3s and their clones, and these sleek new machines wouldn't look out of place on a spaceship in your favourite new sci-fi movie. These days, it certainly feels like you get a lot more for your money when you invest in a machine like the K1C. The touchscreen is also really nice to use. It's very responsive, and I haven't found that there are any essential features or settings missing, which hasn't been the case on a lot of other printers I've reviewed lately. I haven't mentioned the setup process on the K1C as there's really not much to do. As with a lot of Core XY machines now, you only really have to remove some packing materials and protective films before you turn it on. I did have to fit the door handle, the screen, and strangely a protective strip on the inside of the top cover, but all in all it probably only took about five minutes. The filament feeds into the back, but if you don't like the position of the rear spool holder, then you can just print another one that fits on the side. Once you're powered up, the screen guides you through a couple of other things like adding your Wi-Fi details and then connecting to Creality Cloud, which is Creality's attempt at an all-in-one app for places to find things to print and also some sort of community. Personally, I haven't really used it for anything other than monitoring my prints when I'm not on the same network as my 3D printer. It seems to do all of this pretty well in my experience and it's great that it's free with the Creality machines unlike the third-party apps that you'd have to use with a standard clipper setup. Once the K1C had run through a couple of self-calibration processes, I started printing, and printing, and printing. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever had a 3D printer that just dropped into line as my main 3D printer so quickly and easily. There's usually some messing around to do with slicer settings or some kind of minor hardware issue to sort, but nope, it just worked. Even after the first 100 hours of printing, I found nothing to complain about. It was only when I went looking that I found the minor issue with the bed mesh, I didn't actually notice it with any real world prints. Come to think of it, 
I only actually had one print failure and that was with nylon because the standard profile's bed temperature was too low. Once I raised it, it printed fine. Other than that, the K1C has just printed anything I've thrown at it. Now that I've given the K1C a thorough testing, let's look at some pros and cons. I've had to look hard for negatives, but if I'm being really picky, the build volume could be a little bit small compared to some of the opposition. It is the same size as the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M models, but it's smaller than the Bamboo Lab P1S. But then that printer's more expensive, so that's probably not a fair comparison. The Two Trees SK1 machine's bed is bigger and the machine's cheaper, but it's also a lot less refined, so that's probably not a fair comparison either. I suppose the fairest comparison is with that Flash Forge 5M Pro model, as where I live, they're basically the same price, and there's very little to choose between them. For me personally, I'd probably choose the K1C because of that open access to the Clipper firmware, but the 5M Pro's air filtering is better. Anyway, back to the K1C and its cons. I would have liked chamber heating, but there's nothing else at this price range that I know of that does have it. Creality Slicer can be a little bit slow to process things, but then you can just switch to other software like Orca Slicer, as I did. I suppose the biggest negative has to be that bed mesh, which isn't perfect, but didn't actually cause me any real world problems. As you may have guessed, there are a lot of pros on my list. Firstly, it just works. This very rarely happens when I'm testing a printer, but I had nothing to fix or work around. I've had no clogs, no annoying internal processes that have frustrated me, and no issues at all that have stopped me printing, and nothing I can see in the hardware that makes me think that there'll be any problems in the near future. It looks great, it's easy to clean out, it's quick to set up in the first place, and it heats up quickly for each individual print. The K1C prints great with every filament I've thrown at it, and since it seems that I can trust it to not mess up while I'm away, I love that I can keep track of it while I'm not on the same network as you usually have to be with a clipper machine. But even though there's lots to love about this latest Creality machine, my absolute favourite thing is the unrestricted access to the clipper backend. For me, this future-proofs the hardware as I can just add any new clipper feature that appears, and if there's anything I don't like, I can just change it. To do this without affecting the original operation of the machine and making zero compromises is great. I love it. I've gotten used to being disappointed by many of the Core XY machines that I've been sent over the last year or so in one way or another. It was a refreshing change to be impressed by what Creality have done with the K1C at a really competitive price point. To have done this by developing a pretty universally hated machine shows that maybe they just should have taken a little bit more time when developing the original K1. If they had released this version of the machine originally, then I think a lot of people would have bought it. The way things have panned out though, I think a lot of people will probably avoid the K1C because of its name and the terrible reputation of the K1. And this is why the K1C is not the printer I expected it to be. It's so much better and by far the best Creality printer that I've ever owned. If you think the K1C could be the printer for you, then check out the links in the description where you should find the best possible price I can get for you. If you own a K1C and think I've missed anything, then let me know in the comments. If you want to know what I thought about that Flash Forge 5M Pro, which I see as the main rival for the K1C, then click over here to see my review of the best 3D printer that I won't use. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.